Okay, so this is the second video in the amount of substance topic um, from the AQA AS specification, the chemistry specification, uh, and it's going to look at ideal gas um, and particularly the calculations. Um, first of all, I'm not going to go into real details of sort of what an ideal gas is or the sort of derivation of the equation. It's purely going to be the calculations based on it. If you want to go into more detail, get on Google, have a look at what it is, have a look at the assumptions that an ideal gas. Um, all the assumptions about a gas that, that make it ideal. I'm not going to go through those, by all means look them up, but um, this is just going to concentrate on the actual calculations involved uh, and the equation. Um, and that equation is as follows. The equation is PV equals N uh, T. Now what's quite useful about this is that when we have a gas, uh, before I actually look at kind of this part in more detail, when we have a gas, um, one mole of a gas, so one mole of any, and this is the strange thing, any gas um, occupies the same volume, and that volume is 24 decimeters cubed, roughly, at uh, 100 kilopascals and 298 Kelvin. So because we have this idea that the gases, any gas will occupy the same volume, we can, it doesn't matter what gases we've got, we can use this equation to, um, to calculate various things and therefore calculate moles of gases um, or calculate volumes and all the rest. So the equation itself, PV equals NRT. Um, P, pressure. That's going to be measured in Pascal's PA. V is volume, and that's measured, maybe quite confusingly, in meters cubed, not centimeters cubed. It's measured in meters cubed. Over here, N, this is number of moles. Don't need to really worry about a unit for that. This guy here, R, is classed as the gas constant and it has a value of 8.31. That will always be given to you in an exam. You have not got to worry about that. Uh, and its unit is joules kelvin per mole. And finally, this guy here is our temperature measured in kelvin. You need to be aware of all these units. If you mess the units up, you're going to mess the equation up and therefore you're going to get the wrong answer. You might get some error carried forward, but you've just got to learn the units of so Pascals, meters cubed, no units. Don't really need to worry about the units there. You'll be given um, the values that you need. Um, and then finally, temperature in Kelvin. That means you may need to convert your answer from degrees Celsius into Kelvin. Now what I'm going to do with this, similarly to the last video which was on um, sort of various calculations involved in um, mole calculations, concentration, things like that, masses. Uh, I'm going to use some exam questions. I've got three exam questions that I'm going to go through, uh, which will give you a good idea of how to sort of apply this uh, equation to a, to a given scenario. So, we'll have a look at the first one then. Okay, so first question. Ammonia is used to make nitric acid, HNO3, by the Oswald process. The three reactions occur in this process. Reaction 1, reaction 2, reaction 3. And then we go on to, in one production run, the gas is formed in reaction 1, so we're looking at this one here, um, occupy a total volume of 4.31 metres cubed at 25 degrees Celsius and 100 kilopascals. Calculate the amount in moles of NO, nitrogen oxide, nitrogen oxide, produced. Give your answer to three significant figures. And you can see here, it gives you this gas constant R equal to 8.31 uh, joules per Kelvin per mole. So, we can ignore, first of all, for this portion we're dealing with, we can ignore these two. We do not need them. We are looking at reaction one only. Um, and as I would do in any question like this, I would look at the information you've got. So we have a volume, we have a temperature, and we have a pressure. And of course we have a, um, a gas constant here as well. So, starting point. Write the equation out. First thing you should always do, get it written out so you know where you're going. And then rearrange it. For this question, we're looking to calculate the amount in moles of NO produced. Well, moles here is N. So let's rearrange it so that we have N as the subject. Rearranging this, we'll find that N equals P 
PV over RT. And then we just need to substitute in our numbers. Now in this case, P is our pressure. Now pressure here is 100,000 because we have kilopascals. Remember that uh, pressure was measured in pascals. We've got to convert this to pascals. Do not do not keep it as 100. It's the classic mistake here. There's a lot of unit conversions. So 100,000, multiply that by our volume, which is given in meters cubed, which is quite nice. No conversion required there. Divide by... RT, R being 8.31 over here, they give that to you, that's nice, and T, not quite so nice, not given to us in Kelvin, just got to convert it, 25, add 273, which of course actually takes us to 298 Kelvin there. When we have finished working that out, we'll find that um, over here, moles is equal to 174, blah blah blah. Now, you might stop there, and you might say, right, fine, I've done my answer, but that's not actually the end. Because if you read this, calculate the amount of in moles of NO produced. Well, this thing here, this equation of PV equals NR2, and these volumes given, it's, it's referring to the total gases. So the gas is formed in reaction one. Well, there's another gas here as well, there's water. So what we have to decide is actually what we've got here, this is the moles of the entire thing, which in our equation equates for 10 four and six. So actually if we divide this by ten this is now moles of NO and then we multiply it by four that will now equate for this ratio we have of four to six. So we divide it by the total number of um, moles of gas we have we're multiplying that by four to give me my NO and what I'll find there is my final answer comes to sixty nine point six three significant figures, moles. So I have 69.6 .6 moles of nitrogen monoxide. So it's a relatively straightforward equa um, way of working these out. The equation is not too bad to use. Always rearrange. Do not um, try and be clever and try and skip steps. Make it clear the rearrangement that you've made because if you do mess up somewhere, just you type a number wrong in your calculator, you will still get loads of marks um, for this actual working here. That sometimes carries a mark, the rearrangement, putting the numbers in will often carry a mark because of the conversions. So out of your marks, maybe three or four, you'll perhaps still get two from this. Do this one, that's going to get you a third mark. This is only worth perhaps one mark in total or four marks with the correct working. So 174 was our total number of moles here. Divide it by 10 times by 4 to give us the number of moles of NO. There we go, 69.6. Okay, so let's have a look at a different question. Okay, a question now about boron trichloride. So BCl3 can be prepared as shown by the following equation. Blah, 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 blah. A sample of boron oxide, yada, yada, yada. was completely ready for carbon chloride. Blah, 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 blah. Right, two gases pr um, produced occupied a total volume of 5,000 centimetres cubed at a pressure of 100 kilopascals and at a temperature of 298 Kelvin. There's our... Ideal gas, and again, we're looking to do this to three significant figures. And so we're calculating a mass. So calculate the mass of boron oxide that reacted, give our answer three significant figures. So again, write the equation out PV equals NRT, rearrange it. We're going to again work out moles and we're going to finally convert that to mass. So therefore, moles is equal to PV over RT, just as we had before. Put the numbers in. 100 kilopascals, remember, scale it up so it's in pascals, 100,000 pascals multiplied by a volume. This time, not quite so nice. It's given to us in centimetres cubed. Now, I'll show you how you convert here. If we start with centimetres cubed, remember that we looked before at converting to decimetres cubed, and in doing so, we divided by 1,000. Well, the same is true from decimetres cubed to metres cubed. But if we're going the entire way across, we're actually going to divide by a million. So it's going to be 5,000 divided by a million. Alternatively, that would be 5,000 times 10 to the minus 6. If you're comfortable using um, the standard form and all the rest of it, then use that. If you're not, just divide by a million. Um, also, actually, going the opposite way, should be said you would times by a thousand which actually comes up in the next question which I'll look at again so here we've converted our centimetres cubed into our metres cubed which is correct for our volume R again 8.31 
temperature given to us in Kelvin this time, no conversion required. And we stick it into the calculator and we come out with a value of 0 0.2019. It's much smaller than last time. Now, this is not done. Similarly to the last question, we're looking at a total volume that equates for both of these gases. We do not want that. We want the... Um, well, it's actually a little bit different here because what we're doing is we've been given, we have now calculated the number of moles of gases produced. We now need to factor it back and look at well, what was the original mass of boron oxide. So if we know that this total number of moles here equates for 5 moles in the equation, well, let's divide 0 0.2019 by 5. And that actually now gets around the ratio of 1 to 5, 1 to 5. This now gives us the number of moles of B2O3. So moles of B2O3 equals 0 0.2019 divided by 5. So just once more, what I've done here, I'm calculating the moles of the total gases produced. So both of these gases, when added together, come to a number of moles of 0 0.2019, and that's because they all occupy the same volume at this given pressure and temperature. Um, or one mole occupies the same volume. So this is this number of moles here. That is going to be 5 within the equation. So looking at the ratio of 1 to 5, if I divide this by 5, it takes me down to the number of moles there that I have, which is the 1. Now, knowing how many moles I now have of B2O3, which once I've divided by 5 comes to 0 0.0403815. Once I've got that, I can now use my normal moles' is mass over MR to actually calculate the mass of boron oxide that I've got. So again, I'll just write that over here. You should hopefully know that. Moles is mass over MR. Rearrange that because I want my mass. So mass of B2O3 is the moles times the MR. Well, my moles is my 0 0.040, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to put that into calculator as 0.040. I'm just writing that. You would use the, the um, full number if you can. Um, and I'm going to multiply that by the MR, which in this case is uh, each boron is 10.8. So 10.8 times 2 add 16 times 3 and I find that in total that comes to rounded to two, three, significant, three significant figures sorry 2.81 grams so just recap on this one what we've done we worked out the total number of moles of gases produced we divided that by 5 to equate for the ratio of 1 to 5 that gave us the number of moles of boron oxide we then converted that number of moles using the MR to the mass as was requested there. Okay, one final question, and then we're done. Okay, final question then. In another experiment, a different sample of magnesium nitrate decomposed to produce 0.402 moles of gas. Calculate the volume in decimeters cubed that this gas would occupy at 330 Kelvin, 333 Kelvin, sorry, and 1 times 10 to the 5 Pascals, R value given again. Um, the reason I chose this is because it's different. We're not calculating moles, we're now calculating volume. So, exactly as before, PV equals N R T. Therefore, volume, V, equals N, R, T, over P. Always rearrange it, make it clear what you are doing. N this time, 0 0.402. And I will just highlight the various bits of information. So we've got moles, we've got a temperature, we've got a pressure. We're calculating a volume, and we've got 8.31. So 0 0.402 times my 8.31 times my temperature, different temperature this time, not 298, but it doesn't matter, use the temperature given, divided by my pressure, which is 1 times 10 to the 5, which is actually just 100,000, and they just like to do it just to confuse you. Um, when we work that out, we'll get to a volume of 0.011242, blah, 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 blah. But remember, that's meters cubed. Uh, we need to convert. Remember what I said last time? centimeters cubed to decimeters cubed to meters cubed we divide by a thousand going the opposite way we multiply by a thousand 
So we're going to go from meters cubed to decimeters cubed. So we multiply this by a thousand, and that's going to give us uh, rounded to give us three significant figures. It's going to give us 11.1 .1 decimeters cubed, and that's that. Different one there then. So V, working out our volume, giving the va varied in, uh, various information from the question again. Convert from meters cubed decimeters cubed. Do not miss that in the question. Yeah, volume in decimeters cubed, and there we have it. So that's a fairly quick um, video, but hopefully that's uh, been some help of looking at how the ideal gas equation works.